Welcome to Vacuum Wars and to our review of the Echovacs D-Bot T20 Omni Robot Vacuum. The T20 is the latest flagship robot vacuum from Echovacs and it has all of their best tech packed into one product. After putting it to the test over the past several weeks, I was not only extremely impressed with its performance and features, but also with its value. So links in the description and let's get started. Starting off with the features, the Echovacs D-Bot T20 uses LiDAR navigation on top for its basic mapping and navigation as most top tier D-Bots do, but it also has a suite of obstacle avoidance avoidance sensors in front which are used for avoiding objects that are too low for its LiDAR to detect and too light for its bump sensor to detect. Echovacs went with a structured light system and laser combination for its obstacle avoidance sensors this time, getting rid of the camera like on the X1 and T10 Omni. Dropping the camera looks to be becoming a trend with premium robot vacuums, probably because it does away with security concerns that can make consumers uncomfortable. But what's interesting is that not having a camera-based system does not appear to be a downgrade. In fact, in our obstacle avoidance tests, the T20 had the highest score we've seen so far, an 11 out of a possible 12, which suggests that Echovacs is improving this technology and reducing the cost at the same time. Another big feature is the new Omni Station, which has auto dustbin emptying, mop pad washing, tank filling, and auto mop pad drying, all of which the X1 Omni had too, but the new T20 also is the first robot vacuum that has heated water mop pad washing, which should make it even better at removing stains from the mop pads and reducing maintenance. I tested this and found that it was really good at removing stains, though it was more lukewarm water than hot water, but still better than cold water. The Omni Station has large, clean and dirty water tanks which are easy to remove and empty, and overall the entire bin system operates exactly as it should, giving the user a truly automated experience. The mop system itself also has some new elements. It still uses two spinning brushes, spinning at 180 RPMs with downward pressure, but for the first time they also included a mop pad lifting mechanism, which means that when it senses carpet, it will lift up the mop pads so it doesn't get the carpets wet, which we test and found it to be pretty good at. The real value of the auto lifting pads though is that if you have a mix of hard floors and carpets, you no longer have to attach and detach the pads and do a completely separate run in order to mop. You can do it all in one run and dramatically increase efficiency and reduce the things that you have to think about. The Echovacs app has pretty much every feature a premium robot vacuum has to offer, like virtual barriers which keep it from going where you don't want it to go, specific room or area options, advanced scheduling features where you can set the power levels for each room or the order that you want it to clean in, multi-level maps, quick mapping, lots of options for how you want it to return to the bin or wash the pads or how long you want it to dry the pads, 3D mapping, carpet boost settings, an AI voice assistant, and more. Moving on to performance, with its basic job of vacuuming hard floors and carpets, I was incredibly impressed. It has two side brushes and a new anti-tangle brush design, which makes it very smooth with debris pickup on the surfaces of hard floors and carpets. It was also above average with vacuuming up deeply embedded dirt in carpets, and it had above average scores with certain power metrics like airflow. As far as mopping performance, we tested this in a variety of ways and found it to be as good or better than any premium robot vacuum with some minor limitations. For example, it almost perfectly cleared our dried on grape juice test and other dried on tests. It was good with wet tests as well, but as with all of these robot mops, it's easy to overload the pads by giving them too much to pick up, which can cause streaking. This is one of the reasons I like the app feature on the T20, which allows you to send it back to the station more often to clean the pads if you anticipate a very soiled area. But in most cases, with very light dried on mopping tasks, I think the normal setting on the T20 will work just fine with no streaks. In the navigation tests, where we do several runs on a fixed floor plan on different power settings, we found that the T20 was more efficient than average. In those tests, we also found that its battery efficiency was better than average. If you run all the calculations, the T20 can cover around 1700 square feet per charge, which is more than the previous versions and way above average. But take those numbers with a grain of salt, since there are so many variables that can change in your situation. Moving on to the cons, 
runs. Sometimes the app would freeze up and I had to close it to get it to work, which is probably just a minor bug that can easily be fixed. Also, at one point, one of the auto lifting pads sort of got dislodged when I removed one of the pads. It was easy to fix by pushing it in and twisting it, but it makes me wonder if there will be some issues with that down the road. Really, that's the main thing I want to know. What kind of experiences consumers will have with this in the real world over time, which is always a question with brand new products like this, because if it does well and people have relatively few problems with the T20, then I have to say, at this price point, which is so much cheaper than its direct competitors, it's going to be hard to beat. It has literally every major feature. Its performance on things like the obstacle avoidance test were the best I've seen. Its general vacuuming and mopping performance is top tier. So if I had to choose today, the T20 would probably win our best robot vacuum in the premium category. Links in the description and be sure to subscribe to Vacuum Wars before you leave. Thanks for watching.